Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Master Paul. Thank you for joining me today. It is Thursday. I believe it is the 24th of August. I'm probably only one day off if I'm wrong. And thank you for joining me on today's live stream. I suspect this one will be very, very popular. If you're just tuning in, happen to be scrolling through your uh, Facebook feeds. <clears throat> Maybe I ended up on a group somewhere. My encouragement is that you stick around because the subject matter today will most likely be something you will appreciate. The subject matter is how to align to and integrate the incoming higher frequencies that are entering our life and have been entering our life and in many cases have been causing havoc in our life. So today will be how to align to and integrate these higher frequencies so that they don't mess with us basically. So if that sounds like it resonates with you, I encourage you to stick around <clears throat> and enjoy this live stream. Also invite everybody to please share the live stream. Let other people know about this. Uh, and um, for anybody that's new and would like to stick around but is unable to, I encourage you to hit the um, uh, subscribe and like button on my page and you'll know when I go live and you'll also be able to come back to my page anytime and watch the live streams. <clears throat> right above my uh, video is the list to the archives. I've covered quite a few um, subjects on the matter of soul, all things soul, uh, and including how to clear our blockages in our body, uh, physical, emotional, mental bodies, uh, the chakra systems, and so much more. So uh, I encourage you to learn a bit more and stick around and watch today's live stream. So welcome to everybody that is joining. We're just getting started. <clears throat> Should be, as I said, a very popular subject matter today. Yesterday, uh, have no idea what happened. Uh, live stream cut off right at the end there. No particular reason why. That's just uh, the quirk of uh, Facebook. Probably because we were doing some very powerful blessings yesterday. Most likely that's what it was. Whenever the light is so um, extreme, <clears throat> sometimes it irritates the darkness and they do things like cut off your live stream. <laughs> so today we'll do our best to keep a strong stream. And so I'm going to pause for a moment and welcome all those that are coming in. And uh, so welcome to Becca Ryan. Welcome, Linda. Welcome also to M.A. Drake. Welcome to Lisa Zarniak and Aloha Lisa Carter. Welcome also to Janice Crosby. <coughs> Welcome, Nikki. Okay, this is interesting. I touched a button and Facebook is doing something very weird and I'm not quite sure how to uh, change it and go back. So, I'm going to be poking at my screen until I figure it out. Wow, that is very weird. Okay. So what's Facebook's done is they show me each of your pictures, which I really appreciate, but uh, uh, I'm unable to see the chat right now. And so I'm having to uh, push a variety of buttons until this screen that I did not request goes away. Okay, and let's switch it back around so you can see me. So, this is quite a debacle. I may have to finish this live stream before I can even move forward because I cannot see any of your comments. Uh, all right. Well, I am completely unable to see your comments, so we're just going to have to move forward regardless. 
I apologize in advance. Um, I can see who's tuning in. So welcome Angie, welcome Christine, welcome Sasha, welcome to Candy. Aloha to Jennifer, welcome also to Richie Souter, and welcome to Jess Christensen, Aloha Karen Mahoney, and welcome also to Deborah Anderson, Mich uh, Stephanie Michelle Montgomery, welcome also to Kathy Arnold and CJ, and welcome Sharon Dodd, Aloha LaRonda, welcome Teresa, welcome Edna, <coughs> welcome Michelle Prosperity, Apasia, welcome Veronica Nicole, welcome also to uh, Pari. I, uh, I can only shake my head and it's very difficult to not be frustrated when I can't see any of your comments. So, all right, flying blind, time to serve. So welcome everybody. Thank you for joining today. Uh, anybody that's new, my name is Master Paul. That means that I am a certified Tao teacher uh, through the Tao Institute. That means that I have a skill set specific to soul and all things soul here to serve you. <clears throat> so today, uh, before we get started, I'm going to chant love, peace and harmony to connect heart to heart, soul to soul, so that each and every one of us can uh, be fully present for the teaching today. It will be very important how to align ourselves uh, and to integrate the incoming activities so many things are changing in humanity and it's impacting us individually so today we're going to talk about how to best deal with that welcome suki singh welcome also to uh, janet and thank you all for your sharing let me make one adjustment here okay ah looks like i found you again good i just learned how accidentally to um to see your posts Okay, welcome also, Vanessa. <clears throat> so let us chant love, peace, and harmony. I know I need it now because that was a little bit disconcerting. Facebook does these wonderful changes without any notification, without any, uh, this is how you deal with it. Uh, welcome, Tiffany Ann. So uh, let, us, let us connect. Placing our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position, dropping the left hand in front of your heart center, Right hand gently pointed towards heaven. Let us close our eyes and connect. Dear our beloved divine creator, we love you, we honor you, we deeply appreciate you. We ask for your presence. Dear all layers of the divine, the Tao, the source, beings of light, masters, ascended masters, lamas, gurus, sifus, and saints, we love you all, honor you all, deeply appreciate you. We invite your presence today as well. We ask for you to please be with us in whatever way is most appropriate to assist each and every one of us with further awakening to the uh, information that will be shared today. Bless us each to more further align and integrate the incoming energies and frequencies in such a way that it benefits us instead of creates difficulties in our life. We're very, very grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> Dear the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony, divine mantra, we love you, honor you, appreciate you. As we chant your beautiful mantra, we ask that you please connect all of us heart to heart, soul to soul, and we invite all souls in all universes to please turn on their source soul song of love, peace, and harmony to join us in this service. So for all those that are new, that are just tuning in, this is a mantra, this is a blessing. You can make a request to heaven and receive. For everybody else, please join in to offer this service. Lula, li, lula. Wo ai wo xin er ling. Wo ai tran ran le. Wang li hi rang er mu shi shang. 
相爱平安的谁？相爱平安的谁？ I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. <clears throat> 好，好，好 ，Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, if you enjoyed that, if it feels nice to you, I encourage you to learn more about it.、Uh, it is a mantra that has been translated into forty-three languages. It is sung in six continents around the world. And it is a mantra that can bring oneness. You can learn more.、Uh, Kristen、uh, Rojas has posted on her chats. She's my right hand,、uh, and you can gather more information there. So, welcome to uh, Gl uh, Gleason Elizabeth. Welcome also to Kathy Arnold. Welcome、uh, Tiffany. Welcome Angie Taylor. Aloha to Lisa Brady. Welcome Dove, and aloha to Bob Reed. Aloha Nina. Welcome Kayla. If I haven't mentioned your name, I probably haven't seen you. Forgive me, but welcome to everybody. So the source, soul song of love, peace, and harmony, is here to serve.、Uh, we are all actually here to accomplish that, believe it or not.、Uh, but for the most part, we're very much stuck in our individual stuff. And so, when I was tuning in today, as I do every day, I ask Heaven,、uh, what should I focus on today? Sometimes the answer is very clear. Sometimes it's a little muddy, and I have to wait for it to manifest. Today, it was pretty clear.、Um, Heaven was sharing with me that humanity is not waking up fast enough, and those that are awake are not applying what they know to better or best assimilate the incoming shifts and frequencies that are occurring.、Um, these. <clears throat> Shifts and frequencies. I'll talk a little bit more about in a few minutes, but we have to understand that if we are not growing, we are hurting.、Uh, I'll give you an example. I lived in Sedona, Arizona, for about eight or nine years. Now, most of you have heard of Sedona.、M、many of you maybe have been fortunate enough to go there. It's a very beautiful place,、um, but one of the unique things that Sedona is known for is what's called their vortex energies, which in essence is、uh, magnetic.、Um, Spirals, if you will, that either、uh, go into the earth or come out of the earth in those areas. Now they're also known for、uh, spacecraft and a variety of other things up there. But、um, basically, he who lives in that zone, especially if you live there ten years, is forced to grow. If you don't grow, you go through pain. I had a friend over there. His name is、uh, Amir. Amir is a great guy, but he was always suffering. He was always getting、uh, his tail kicked by life because he refused to grow spiritually. And that's what's happening now, as a whole, for all of humanity. 7.7 billion of us, and we are all being bombarded by higher frequencies. Now, I will share with you my understanding. Welcome to、uh, Cara Belafus, and welcome to Linda Leon.、Uh, anybody else? If you've tuned in, welcome. <clears throat> and it may not match up to your understanding, and that's okay. You may have greater knowledge, more knowledge, less knowledge, different. Knowledge, and it's all perfect. The information I'll be sharing with you today is what I've come to understand, and I hope it assists you. So what I've come to learn is that、um, our portion of this grand thing called the universe is moving into a different area of our universe, our galaxy, if you will, which includes our sun and our nine known planets.、Uh, rotates. We rotate. We're one big rotational device. And that's what makes up our galaxy.、Uh, if you've seen the Hubble pictures, how many galaxies are there? Right, literally more than they can count. Billions. There are literally billions of galaxies. We are one. So we are floating around in this massive thing that they call space. And in this massive thing that they call space,、uh, 
this galaxy that we are in is moving through an energetic field. Now, this is where the terminology gets a little mixed up, but a lot of us will uh, say that uh, we are going to snap into the fourth dimension. Some of us say that instantly those that are enlightened and heart opening, they're just going to be in a different place and everyone else will be in an unpleasant place. And there's a thousand different variations of perceptions of what will occur. Again, I'm only going to share with you mine. You're, you're under no obligation to accept it as a truth. I encourage you simply to have an open mind, add it to what you know and see if it assists you. So my understanding, based on the uh, teach, teachings that I've received from my spiritual father, Master Shah, who is an enlightened being, who is a very aware enlightened being, is that um, this shift we're moving into, uh, the fourth dimension, the fifth dimension, whatever dimension you want to refer to it as, uh, is not a, a quick thing. It's, uh, it's about a 100-year process, additionally, and we've been working with it for about 70 or so years moving from mind over matter into soul over matter and so forth. And in this uh, past 70 years, we've had many enlightened beings come in as children. Um, many, many very high level souls entering. Their purpose, of course, is to assist us as stewards into moving into love and light. We are on the forefront of this cutting edge, of this um, uh, blasting into the new uh, dimension, if you will. Um, but at least from the information I've been working with and that has come to me, it's not going to be an instant, you know, switch your finger and we're there. Um, between here and there, <clears throat> there could be a great deal of suffering or there could be a great deal of love. What dictates will it be a great deal of suffering or a great deal of love? What dictates it is actually a universal consciousness. This is truly an important part of the subject matter today. Um, literally, we are all individually and collectively responsible for our, uh, our creation. We have a collective creation, we have an individual creation, and this subject matter today is both for our individual creation first, which affects the collective creation, okay? We have to do our part, because as we do our part for ourselves, then we are assisting the whole. Though everybody who's watching this has a level of awakening. Everybody that's watching this is aware to varying degrees. Again, you may have different perceptions, beliefs, that's okay. Do know, however, that we're not done moving into this higher layer of frequency and that uh, we as a, as a person is not necessarily moving into it. We as a universe is literally rotating into it. Now, what this higher frequency does to us individually and to us collectively as a whole is it rattles everything that is not in alignment with it. <clears throat> what does that mean, a higher layer of frequency? It means it's a higher layer of original creator, which in essence is a higher layer of love. So whenever you hear the word higher frequency specific to spirituality, know that it's a, a higher frequency of love. You, you, on the other hand, you might hear higher frequencies in relationship to pitches or sound. That's not the same thing. We're talking in relationship to our spiritual journey. So we will, as an individual and as a race, eventually move through the various dimensions until we blip out of physical existence and become part of the whole. But that could be billions and billions of years. Between here and there, we're where we're at. Individually, we need to be um, much more adjusted to what's coming in. So here's what happens. These frequencies that are vibrating in a much higher love-based frequency, they basically, when they hit us, they cause us to rattle. They cause us to um, to vibrate more of whatever our predominant focus is on. If our vibrational focus is on our soul journey and love being of value to everyone else, then our vibrational focus will be enhanced in that direction. If our vibrational focus is on anger, irritation, jealousy, they did this to me, 
uh, anything of those natures, that will also be enhanced. So this creates a problem for you and it also creates a problem for humanity. It's similar to what happens during a full moon. Full moons uh, enhance the frequencies, therefore you get more, quote, crazy people, and as validated by you know, our police stations. And you also, a lot of people don't talk about, but there's also a lot more love for those that are vibrationally centered in that uh, standing. The movement from here into the next layer of dimension, which again, according to the understandings that I've come to understand is going to take some time, uh, is like an elongated full moon. And it's not going to become less vibratory. It will become more. And so we as individuals, we as a collective whole, need to start being very conscious of our choices. We as a collective whole need to start being very careful of our thoughts, our words, and our actions, especially around ourselves. Because if we do not, if we continue to stay in the fray of emotional uh, uh, um, negativities or emotional griefs or sadness or emotional anger, or you know how many people just anger, 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 uh, we all have um, one emotion that tends to, to grab us more than others. But if we refuse, in essence, to work with it, to process through it and out of it, using the wisdoms that the great masters have brought to us, love, forgiveness, etc., then we're going to get nailed. Um, and it's just going to keep driving us down that direction we really don't have a desire to go. And that's because we're refusing to grow, in essence. So, um, the, these frequencies are not going to stop just because you don't like them. They're not going to uh, minimize because you're not handling it well. They will continue because that is the nature of progress in terms of your spiritual journey. We are all onward and upward uh, at some point in time. And so as we move into these frequencies, my encouragement to you is to uh, get on the horse, grab the reins and start controlling it with love. OK, a um, little side story. I was I was reading a little blurb on the, uh, um, a horse whisperer, a horse trainer. Uh, uh, he was I don't know anything about horses. I was just reading this and he was nationwide renowned <clears throat> and they did the article uh, with him and they said, well, what is it you do this different? And he says the horse is exceedingly sensitive. So many people get on the horse and they they'll jerk the rein even an inch or two and he says, I don't do that. He says, I give the horse respect. I give him love. I get on the horse. I connect my heart to the horse's heart. And I think and give a, a fraction of a pull. Not even, a, I just think and barely give a tid of a pull. And the horse goes the direction that, that I would enjoy. Uh, why do I bring that to the forefront? Because as we... Um, as we move into this uh, new frequencies, uh, adjust to these frequencies is a better way to put it. We can make a little adjustment in one way or the other and it can have a very positive effect or a very unpleasant effect. Why now is that the case? Used to be we could be angry and it wouldn't come back to bother us for years. Now we get angry and it nails us very quickly. Because as we move into higher dimensions, higher frequencies, we move into faster manifestation. Okay? Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, all those other dimensions, manifestation is virtually instant depending on how uh, aligned to those frequencies you are. So we are not only um, being forced to grow, we are being forced to be responsible for our manifestations. Now here's the scary part. The reason we have a messed up world right now with all of the negativity and, thank God, a lot of positivity is because of our collective manifestations. We individually have to do our part of our uh, responsibility on our manifestations so that we can assist the whole. Um, a few days ago we had the incredible solar eclipse and there was light side beings planning across the world meditations. Thank you to all of you that served in this most profound manner. There were dark side souls that were also working their agenda. So it is a collective consciousness 
and that's a sad but real part of this world that we live in in working with these uh, common sense truths in many ways because again you're all watching this which means you're all aware and the level of awareness that you all have is certainly not something that's questionable the problem is not the level of awareness it's the application of what you have understood so that you don't suffer more so that you move into that higher frequency of love we individually and most uh, collectively don't really apply what we know we know that thinking positively is a good thing uh, Chris Christopher asked dark side what's that supposed to mean dark side is all things that have an agenda that is not to support oneness and love okay um, so when we individually uh, work with the frequencies that are coming in make the minor adjustments make the minor adjustments you get angry you catch yourself you stop you say please forgive me for being angry with you uh, if you pay attention almost always almost always um, the anger is not uh, specifically directed to or, or from what that person did if you literally just step back from it and go okay what is the originator of this angry condition it's probably multiple layers deep from something that happened when you woke up which layer number two which layer number three and then this person did something that they've done four times before and therefore you snapped on them we as an individual we have to start being responsible for getting caught up in our emotions because they keep us out of a place of love they keep us out of a place of kindness we uh, you know me I, I admit I, I I don't smile enough it's not a good thing uh, I have people tell me not more recently thank goodness but definitely in the past that um, they thought I had an issue with them or that I hated them or or that I had a perception or, or that I was judging them and I had to do a forgiveness practice with them individually because that was what they thought now I could be smiling more so or that's a non-issue and, uh, and it's not my stuff that that's what they thought but the right thing to do was to do forgiveness with them and then they were able to release this perception that wasn't necessarily accurate at least where I was coming from we individually have to do our part to watch our emotions uh, and dissolve them as quickly as we can in a positive and loving manner this is tied back into the manifestation things I was just touching on we as individuals are manifestors and it's coming fast in case you haven't figured it out our manifestations are coming a lot 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 faster okay so when you're angry towards somebody it comes back at you when you are um, in a place of sadness it continually keeps you in that place of sadness when you are in a place of depression you stay in that place of depression because what you think is what you continually create sad but true as it's the nature as we move into the higher frequencies the natural side effect is that as we move into a a faster bringing forth of manifestation time as you've heard many times before is an illusion specific to the 3d world um, I don't really like the word illusion because I don't grasp it so therefore I don't like it maybe maybe if I understood it I wouldn't have an issue with it but I don't really grasp it and so I state it as such uh, it feels real to me you know that's what Einstein said he said the 3d world is an illusion albeit uh, an exceptional illusion it is one I thought that was quite funny but um, uh, it's a tough one to call an illusion when it hurts and when it's suffering and when we're getting the tail beat out of us but in the higher frequency dimensions things are instant things are now and so we are slowly moving into that the there is a and I want to state this clearly because I don't want anybody locking into this one there is something that I heard spoken out in the internet world by a source that I give merit to that stated and this is not me saying this this is a source out there that I give merit to you don't have to um, but what it stated was that it has not been decided the end result 
for humanity as we move into these frequencies. It's like, well, what does that mean? And what it said was the collective consciousness has not um, figured out, they have not um, collected in a specific direction enough, in any one direction, to discern the forward direction into that next higher frequency. It's like, wow, that was an interesting comment. But it makes a lot of sense. You look at the politics in America with the, uh, the, um, the person running our, our uh, country, uh, the possible very unpleasant choices before that person, the possible person that's there that's also an equally unpleasant choice. You look at the world as a whole, it's a significant mess. You look at all the beautiful things that are happening, all the oneness movements that are coming together. Um, there's still a lack of of uh, connectivity of the oneness movements. There's still a lack of connectivity uh, and that's what's needed. And so there is a possibility as what was stated that I, that I heard that uh, there hasn't been a decision yet on the specific direction of our timeline. I think that was the verbiage that was used of the timeline that we're in. Will we go uh, more towards a, a negative one or more towards a positive one? We're kind of uh, somewhere in the middle as the collective consciousness gets battered around inside there. So we individually, we think we have no control over our future. We think that, um, I shouldn't say it that way, we think that we can't make a difference in this big hole. I'm just one person. What kind of difference can I make? Substantial. It has been stated many times in many of the high level readings I've come across by many different uh, beings that it takes actually a very small number of very uh, high-level thinking people that can make a big difference in the entirety of humanity. It wasn't like we need a, a million people or a billion people to be on the same page. No, the message was it takes very few high focused people to create a massive shift for the whole. I thought that was interesting hearing it from multiple sources reading in multiple sources. So you can absolutely make a significant difference if all it was was to acknowledge your awakening and start to purposely make a difference every day. Start to choose to not be negative, force yourself to not get involved with the gossiping by all those around you, okay? Walk away, but prior to that walking away, say, you know, uh, I would really appreciate if we could change the subject matter. I really do not want to say disparaging things about others. If they agree, then you have collectively saved everybody some karma, uh, collectively brought more light to that group that is talking, and you can change the subject matter. If those want to stay where they're at and speaking negative, you can choose to walk away, but say something first because you want to positively impact the whole. You can uh, do yourself this favor by teaching your children, teaching our loved ones, our brothers and sisters, the people that we care about. Um, these very simple things, when they uh, uh, make an unpleasant comment, you know, I love you, I wish very much for, um, for you to not spend a lot of time in this place of, of negativity or anger or wherever it's at. Is there anything I can do to assist you to get back to a place of love? That's a very open-hearted comment to someone you care about. And they might say, uh, well, no. Well, okay, so you sit off to the side and you chant love, peace, and harmony for them. There's different things that we can do on a moment-to-moment -moment basis that has a massive collective benefit. We just got to get that. Uh, specific to us, though, we must truly pay attention to our own karma kicking our own tails on a moment-to-moment -moment basis and stop it. Um, all of you who have been watching me for a while, you know I talk about karma. You know I talk about uh, forgiveness practice. I, I don't think I've ever once not covered it. But why? Because of what we're going through. Uh, I didn't talk about this so much eight, nine, ten years ago before I met my spiritual father. But this has been the pulpit by which he constantly speaks. Forgive awake offer love clear your karma blockages because it's only going to get harder as you move forward the karma blockages are coming at us faster why because the frequencies force our blockages to uproot the 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 frequencies that are higher layers of love remember 
these frequencies that I'm speaking about coming into the planet are higher layers of love, higher layers of Creator. They are forcing our stuff to come to the surface. You may like it, it may not, but it is what it is. So apply the wisdoms you've already known before you ever came here and apply the wisdoms you learned here. Apply love, apply forgiveness. Stop blaming everybody else. Move into a place of responsibility. Um, uh, watch your thoughts, your words, and emotions. Stop gossiping. Stop being negative. Make better choices when you can. Don't steal. Don't cheat. Don't take advantage of others. Okay? You have to make those conscious choices because if you don't now, you not only are negatively impacting yourself, you are definitely impacting the rest of humanity. Uh, I saw questions here. Let's scroll up here a minute. So welcome to everyone that's joined. I apologize, uh, uh, Facebook's scroll feed is not working on my phone. I have to kind of roll through it one at a time. Okay, Sasha says, how can I stop a resentment, fear of expressing my understandings to others? A resentment or fear of expressing my understandings to others. I'm always being selfish in my limiting experience because I think people are gonna steal my ideas, okay? Um, uh, Christopher asked about extra, extraterrestrials playing to this. Um, okay, some interesting questions. So I'll kind of uh, cover some of these simply because you all might have some questions around that. So um, fear around others stealing your information. Look at uh, Elon Musk. Okay, Elon Musk is the guy who created the Tesla electric vehicle. You know what he did? He created uh, a vehicle that goes uh, 60 miles an hour in under three seconds, an electric vehicle, and he created uh, one of the world's best batteries, and then he took the patent and he gave it to the world and said, would you mind just looking at this and seeing what improvements you can do upon it? He applied the consciousness of unlimited uh, abundance. He recognized that as he gave to serve, that more would come for him to serve more. That's one example. I'll give you another one. Um, we have to trust. As we move forward into this divine frequency, we must move into higher layers of trust. If we feel we're being taken advantage of, it could be karmic. Yes, that's possible. But if we trust where the source of anything comes from, which is our creator, then we can also trust that we'll be taken care of. Uh, my teacher would say things like, you know, the great masters in the past, his master, he literally uh, worked with him for 12 years. His master didn't smile at him very much for the first eight years. Imagine you walk by your master and he turns his head and walks away. He's, you know, it doesn't give you any love. You know, this is hardcore Chinese masters. He um, didn't teach him a single thing about his, his teacher was a miracle healer, worked with very high layers of divine, didn't teach him anything. Around the 11th year, he pulled the student aside and said this, to my teacher, who, his name is Master Shai, he said, I have tested you very hard. Now I will give you the teachings. 11 years. How many of you can stand that, right? Uh, cooking for the teacher, cleaning for the teacher, doing everything, no love whatsoever, 11 years. He would have walked away after one year. What did this teacher learn? He said now that he is receiving high level wisdom and blessings, he shares it with all of his students willingly. Traveled the world, gave away the high level secrets, how to open your spiritual channels, how to open your third eye, how to clear the karma blockages, lots and lots of high level wisdom. Where are the sacred energy points in the body that the masters hide from their students unless they've been with them 12 years? He teaches in all of his books. And what he realized after he started releasing all this information publicly was that the more he released, the more heaven gave him. The minute he released a, a secret that had been hidden for 100 years, heaven said, yes, and now we can teach you about this. And his aha moment, and he was taught this by heaven, they said, if you fill up your closet and you leave no more room, we cannot give you more. If you continually empty your closet and uplift other souls, we can continue to fill your closet. So I'm not saying to have to, to, to not worry about those things. I'm saying, where is your trust? We have to move into these higher layers of trust as we move into these higher layers of frequencies. And, and it might hurt for a little while at first, but this is where we're headed. Okay. 
Uh, Chris asked an unusual question about how the extraterrestrials play into this. We hope they'll be here soon. Um, they're probably already here. And uh, just as there is very, very, very positive, beneficial, loving uh, life outside of us, um, there is also some unpleasant uh, life outside of us. And they all have their lack of growth or massive amounts of growth that they're all going through. This massive universe will always be a dichotomy of yin and yang of darkness and light all the way up to original creator, which of course is you know, pure love and light. So, um, will they come to save us? Maybe, maybe not. But uh, the information I've come across is that probably not unless things get really, really bad. And the reason why I'm hearing this is because um, free will. Uh, that it's kind of like the prime directive. You can't really mess with people's growth. That every society and every universe has their own growth uh, uh, because it's just part of the natural process. That's the information I've heard. So yes, they may come to save some lives uh, when and if things get really, really ugly. But um, in general, not what I'm hearing. Uh, but everybody might hear something different. That's okay. Okay. So thanks for the opportunity to share that wisdom with you. So uh, I'm just going to, I'm not going to do a practice today as much as give you um, some very specific things that we can all do in a tangible, practicable way. Because it is about being awake. As I said three times now, None of you would be here if you weren't awake. That's not the problem. The problem is the application of what we have learned. We are not, in most cases, on a consistent basis applying what we know. You probably have enough information to move your soul journey forward. You probably have enough information before ever coming to this page to stop your angers, your emotions, the things that are going out of whack. But the main reason why we don't apply what we know is actually ego. And I don't mean ego in that I'm right, you're wrong. I mean ego in that I'm comfortable where I'm at. I don't really want to do the hard work. That means I have to actually stop and fix something. It actually requires a conscious present presence. And when we're not in a conscious present presence, we are in a form of ego in which we're operating kind of on auto pilot. Uh, we're not really applying what we know. We are just moving through life because it's less painful that way. Um, but if we actually got up in the morning and we're in a place of gratitude, in essence, if we apply the 10 Da's, which is what my teacher teaches, the greatest love, forgiveness, compassion, the greatest light, the greatest humility, right? How many of us are truly humble? The greatest, um, uh, harmony. How many of us are doing things that are harmonious wherever we go? Uh, uh, how many of us have gratitude? We, we walk around in gratitude in our thoughts, words, and actions. These are the ten da's, the ten greatest uh, attributes or qualities. Um, how many of us are doing things in service for others? Even in our thoughts, are we offering good thoughts to others? The persons that arguing with the, the husbands, you know, yelling at the wife, and we're just walking by or driving by. Do we send love? Are our thoughts good thoughts? If we apply the greatest love, forgiveness, compassion, and light in our life, in the moment, applying compassion, right? It's, it's not that we don't know it. It's that we're not applying it because we're comfortable. We have to stop being comfortable. We have to force ourselves to grow. We have to have a catalyst. This is why these great catalysts in, in all history occur because, uh, in order to move a massive amount of souls to a higher frequency, you pretty much got to force them to grow. It's sad, but it's true. And again, this is a perception. It may not be an accurate one. Um, I, I believe that this happens in all universes. I don't think by any stretch of the imagination we're alone. I do believe that other souls in other universes on other planets go through similar growth sessions at, at, at different times in their billions and billions of, of years of existence and that they're all on their way back to creator in their own way and we are where we are at and we got to go through our processes we've got to love the ones that that we don't love you know that 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 darkness guys sad 
but you know they're part of the whole. They didn't just show up and not be part of the whole. The whole created everything. So they are part of the whole. If we do not forgive, if we do not do our part to bring more light, which in essence will uplift them out of that darkness that 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 side is putting a lot of emphasis on, we're still not going to return as a whole, as a oneness. So there's so many things that we on an individual basis need to apply our awakening to. Okay, So as I watch your comments, I see that it's not really new information. I see you going, yeah, you know, I agree. It's that's it's true. Uh, again, I, I, it's just um, it's application of it. Now, in the in the school of thought that I come from, in the in the Tao Academy, and the ten thousand or so students that we work with, in my upcoming twelve week open spiritual channels program, which I'll do a little sales pitch on right now. Come to my 12-week Open Spiritual Channels program, guys. It will help you to move into a far deeper awakening. Um, Kristen will post it in her, in her chat. Thank you, Kristen. But the, the reality is sometimes, and, and, and sometimes if we like that place of comfortableness, it's really not good. We truly, truly, truly need to recognize that we are a soul and we're having a physical experience and a lot of us are stuck in that physical experience. To move to the soul experience is to move towards love, which means moving away from all these things that we're comfortable with. It means becoming comfortable with higher layers of love, letting go of the emotions that are not serving us, serving others more. It means uh, moving away from selfishness more towards uh, 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 selflessness. It means doing what you know but more on a consistent basis. One of the keys is teaching others. Uh, when I teach, I learn. When you teach others, think about it, you learn. Especially teach your children. You know, Teach them these things. They will throw it back in your face very quickly. And that will help you to learn as well. The beautiful thing about children is they'll always remind us, especially when we tell them something and then they catch us doing uh, <laughs> what we tell them not to do. But it's a beautiful thing when it comes to this higher layer of, of understanding and the application of it. So make sure that you do your parts. I would encourage you to uh, attend any activities by any teacher anywhere. I don't care if it's an Indian guru, if it's your Christian teachings at the church, anywhere. If their mindset is about service to others, and they're not separative, meaning ours is the only way, they don't know what they're talking about. If there's any form of separatism in that belief system that you're with, you may want to look at one that is not separative simply because um, exclusiveness is not the direction of the future. Inclusiveness is the direction of the future. That is the direction of love, that is the direction of oneness, that is the direction of fourth, fifth, and beyond dimensions. So align yourself to whatever teacher you want in whatever way you want that has a path that is followable for the purpose of keeping you on task. That's really the reason behind it. You need that push to keep you on task. My teacher kicks my tail uh, uh, daily. He's got us doing stuff. He's got us doing uh, so much stuff. There's really not enough time in the day to do it all. But what is the reason for it? The reason he forces us into all of these activities is almost impossible to accomplish. We cannot create karma. We're doing good things to serve. We're doing practices to enlighten our soul, heart, mind, and body. Uh, we're doing things, in essence, that keep us out of a a tailspin going backwards and move us forward little by little by little. That's why you need to find a teacher, regardless of who it is. Find one that has the right mindset, attitude, and belief towards the future, towards love, and is willing to give you responsibilities to move your ball forward. What happens is it creates what's called purification, which is awesome, but it sucks. Purification is awesome because you definitely move forward and you definitely know you're on a soul journey. You definitely know that when you return to heaven, you've leveled up. You're going to be far, far, far down that road. That's why purification is good. The part that sucks, it usually comes with 
weaning, weaning away the comfort zones. It comes with weaning away those things that, that we just really like. You know, uh, those attachments, those, the way of being sarcastic or the negativities or, 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 or our, our little gossip sessions or whatever it is that we know are not good. The, the teacher, the good teacher forces you by giving you responsibilities, practices, uh, and calling you on, on, on the BS to level up through and out of those uh, human world blockages. Guys, I'm gonna hit you between the eyes right now. And some of you might be, yeah, we know. Some of you might be, yeah, I don't believe it. But this world is in a heap, a heap, a heap, a heap, a heap of shit. And uh, not in a good way. There's a very real possibility that things are going to go south before they go north. There's a very real possibility that things are going to get uglier before they get better. When you look at the tsunami in Japan, that drew everybody together. It caused a disaster to draw everybody together. We don't want that. But historically, that is the direction that we're headed. And the reason webcasts like this I have done in the past and why I'm doing it again is because if we don't move into a proactive stature for our own individual soul journey, which naturally affects the collective, we're going to have a much more unpleasant future than we really would want to look forward to. It's, we do have the opportunity to make a difference. These things are on the potential horizon. And at least based on the information I've heard, uh, there ain't going to be some, you know, UFOs coming out of the blue and saying, okay, all you down there that want to pull the bombs, you go pull your bomb, we'll just zap up everybody we think is right. I don't think it's going to occur that way. Um, I hope. I wished. That would be wonderful. Then I could just stay down here and be comfortable and not strive, not serve, not awaken anymore. But to... To put our hopes in that probably isn't the best place to put your hopes. We as individuals really have to move into responsibility. Even if that wonderful possibility happened, you still have your individual karma, you still have your individual negativities, your individual mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs that will follow you from lifetime to lifetime until you learn your lessons. It is during these times of greatest light and greatest darkness when they're literally just butting each other's heads all the way up to the point of <coughs> which direction do we go? It is during these great tumultuous times when we have the greatest opportunity for growth, the greatest opportunity for forward momentum. Uh, I have stated this before and you might remember it, but sometimes we don't hear it. So I'll state it again. When we're hanging out in heaven, meditating, right? Sitting on a lotus flower. That's awesome. And we're serving because we're meditating. You know, we're thinking loving thoughts. That's all good. But the amount of virtue we receive in our virtue bank is not as much as when we're down here on the front lines, kicking butt and taking names, doing our part to clean up our spiritual debts, bringing more positive virtue into our life by doing positive things and recognizing as a whole we can make a difference. When we step into our awareness and apply what we know here, now, your level will go up a lot higher than sitting up there in that lotus when you're nice and comfy. Right down here, you're nice and comfy. Even down here, nice and comfy, you might be doing a little bit more, uh, creating a little bit more virtue than even sitting up there doing nothing. But when you uh, do your part down here, what does that mean? That means, if you believe in more than one lifetime, that means next time around, you're not going to have to deal with that uh, uh, major health issue. You're not going to have to deal with that SOB that divorced you and took all your money. If you do your part now, do your real authentic forgiveness now. Do your real authentic taking responsibility that maybe you were the unpleasant person who stole their money before. You deal with it now with the wisdom you have now. Release the blockages. Move higher into love. And you can come out the other side when you return in that next life. Your life could be substantially, substantially less painful and a whole lot more enjoyable and loving. Take the opportunity, okay? If you can, I do recommend finding a good teacher. 
I am a good teacher. I have no problem stating this is confidence. I am a very good teacher. Uh, I'm sure I have ego to work with. I'm trying to get rid of it little by little. But if I don't resonate with you, great. Find somebody that does. But find a teacher that can move you forward, okay? Very important at this time on earth. If they can move you into higher layers of love, release the blockages, help you to manifest more, do so. It's going to it's going to help you. It's going to help everybody. Um, so you know that's why I do these live streams. It, but it you'll find that it's like a it's like a short fix. You know, it's like having that drag on a cigarette if you're a smoker. You're good for a while, but then you go back to life and you go back to that comfort zone. When you have a teacher that dedicates their time to you, and you dedicate your time to the teacher then you can start moving the ball forward. So uh, I, I do another calling for my um, Awakened Spiritual Channels program. It's really about awakening to your soul journey and doing practices that align you to your soul journey, making sure you stay on that path. I know that some of you have financial restrictions. If you have severe financial restrictions, I've made the comment to you, find somebody who can honor the, the $360. You get 12 weeks of back you know all this wisdom and practices and I do group sessions with you and you get blessings during the whole time and I'm there for you during the whole time if you have questions that's you know three months of, 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 of teaching for 360 bucks it's pretty affordable really but if you just can't afford it find somebody who can and this is only for those that are really really financially limited and then you can get a substantial discount for you because you brought in another soul who can use the same benefit okay so I'm very grateful for the opportunity to serve you I hope this wisdom leveled you up I hope you take it to heart I hope you do something with it and start applying some of the wisdoms you know and some of the wisdoms I have shared I will finish by giving everybody a blessing to break through their blockages and to uh, move forward in their awakening okay so prepare sit up straight Bring your back away from the back of the chair. Place your feet flat on the floor. Relax your shoulders, relax your palms, one over the other on your lower abdomen. Close your eyes. Bring your mind, your thoughts, and your breath into your lower abdomen. Another deep breath in. <sighs> Do not make a request. I will offer the blessing. This blessing will be for all those that watch this video in the future as well as all those that watch the podcast or listen to the podcast in the future. This blessing is to assist each and every one of you in whatever way is most appropriate to further awaken and to apply everything you have learned to be a better soul, a more awakened soul. As appropriate. Blessing again. <laughs> Yeah, 
Thank you, healing treasures. Please return. You are all very, very blessed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> so these, this blessing, uh, for some of you, released negative mindsets, thoughts. Uh, for some of you, opened your heart more. For some of you, for actually a lot of you, um, there was additional um, messages deposited into your heart center, scrolls, um, things from heaven that give you uh, heart intelligence uh, there's some big blessings uh, you're all very very blessed so I encourage you to learn more for those that came in late go back watch the whole thing if you're new you enjoy this subscribe uh, to me also you can friend me uh, above the video is a list of the archives uh, from the videos you can watch also come to my website enjoy my website you can see a lot there that can serve you I do blessings that are on the level of miracles for blocked emotions, uh, physical pain, many, many things. So if you know of yourself or anybody that has significant suffering, make sure you check out my website. I can assist you, okay? So thank you all for coming. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great weekend. We will see you in next week. Bye-bye, everybody.